Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to another edition of Talk and Ball. I am Lifetime Longhorn Rod Davis, joined by fellow Lifetime Longhorn C.J. Vogel. The man's putting in the hard work, man. C.J., you've been killing it lately, bro. I've been reading the articles. You've been awesome. The wide receiver article still is one that I've got. I've bookmarked. It'll be part of my research that I'm going to bring forward, man. You've been doing a great job on Texas football. Thank you. So I've Thank I, I want to give you a shout out. I mean, I've been a fan, and you just reaffirmed why I'm a fan of CJ Bogle. You got another article actually on Texas football right now at ontexasfootball.com. The real check out, and we'll get your thoughts on it because it's combine related. Everybody's getting excited. This is combine week. Yes, at one time I went to the combine. I was a part of the experience. So I'll give you some of my personal thoughts about that uh, that meat market they call a combine up there in Indianapolis. Eleven Longhorns represented, so it's fun times. So we'll get into that. Uh, before we get started, let's talk about uh, our sponsor, our wonderful sponsor, uh, John Donovan, president of Longhorn Wealth Management Group. We are so very grateful for John's support. John is a proud Texas Exes Life member who has served over. 15 years, folks, as a Texas Exes board member. His wife and all six of John siblings are also proud UT grads, lifetime long ones, just like my man CJ Vogel as well. Uh, this explains why John has dedicated his firm to providing total wealth management for Texas alumni, employees, family, and friends. Also, you want to make sure that you're a part of that group. And hey, hey you ain't got to be a lifetime longhorn to be able to, to uh, take advantage of John's services. John wants to remind all the longhorns out there. He's a certified financial planner who has spent over 30 years, folks, 30 years, three decades providing investment, retirement, insurance, and estate planning services and solutions to his clients, helping them achieve their financial goals, financial independence by building and optimizing their desired tax efficient retirement income for both. So make sure that you reach out to Don, John Donovan today, his Longhorn Wealth Management team. You can hit them up at 972-707-4900. That's 972-707-4900 or visit longhornwealth.net. Right now you get a free 90-minute consultation to explore how they can help you achieve your true financial independence. So remember that folks, free. You got nothing to lose, but you got everything to gain. Hit up my man, John Donovan and the Longhorn Wealth Management Group and with, very thankful for their support. All right, CJ, uh, before we get into my combine experience and uh, all the uh, the wisdom that I hope to be able to, to uh, impart on others, let's talk about your article over at On Texas Football because it is combine related. You're talking about some of the individual drills that are going to help these guys increase their draft stock, and hopefully that is the case. Yeah, you know, you you look you look at the combine and obviously the 40 jumps out to you, the bench press, the vertical jump, the, some of the big name drills that go on at the combine, get the flashy headlines, right? But for a number of the Texas Longhorns that are hoping to get drafted and hear their name called in the draft, you know, there might be a, a few other, you know, drills that go on uh, at, at, in Indianapolis that could certainly boost their, their draft stock just a little bit. So I, I went ahead and went through all the prospects and which drill I think, you know, could certainly be. Uh, one that NFL scouts and executives are honing in on just a little bit more when it comes to their draft profile. And so I, I went through it and, you know, it was a fun exercise because you get to see these prospects holistically, their yeah. strengths, their weaknesses, and obviously what question marks scouts might have about them. And it was fun. But I, I wanted to go through it with you because I know that you have the background of of knowing what it's like in Indianapolis and obviously what those drills entail and what the buildup is uh, for the months leading up to uh, heading out to Indianapolis. So. For the running backs, you know, Jonathan Brooks not able to participate physically. Interviews really just sitting down face to face mm -hmm. with uh, executives, coaches, scouts. That's yep. going to be big for him. You know, we yep. know what he can do on the field. It's all about getting the face time. Uh, for Keelan Robinson, on the other hand, I think putting that big 40 time out there is going to be big. And I didn't want to just focus on the 40 time for most of these guys. So uh, I, I kind of, you know, varied a bit whenever I, I was talking about him. But for Keelan specifically, who I don't necessarily is viewed at specifically as a is a running back in this combine. I think you're mm -hmm. going to be evaluating him a little bit more as a special teamer. Yeah, uh, we we know what he can do as a gunner. What he did on kickoff as well was was certainly uh, very impressive. But if you can go out there and place yourself in like a low four threes or a mid four threes talk right there, that's going to carry a lot of weight moving in uh, into the draft week. Uh, so I'm looking at Keelan Robinson to say, if you really want to make a splash and make a roster or get an invite to, to a camp, you've mm -hmm. got to put together a strong 40 there. I think yep. that's the most important spot.
No, it's a great point about Keenan Robinson. This is something else I want to bring up too. And I'll have to dive deeper into this. I think every player is affected by external macro factors in their draft stock. I don't know if you've read the report, but the NFL is entertaining um, using the XFL kickoff yeah. and kick yeah, kickoff return rather than obviously the traditional kickoff because the, the NFL is concerned that basically their kickoff has become moot, that the kickoff and kickoff returns don't matter anymore. Only 22% of kickoffs were returned last season. Um, and all 13 of the kickoffs in the Super Bowl were touchbacks. So teams only they they shadow they essentially shadow ban the kickoff in the NFL. It doesn't matter. But but it, it is a very violent play. By the way, I got hurt on kickoffs. I got I had, had a shoulder surgery because I had to go blow up a wedge on the kickoff, which is now banned in the NFL. They can't even have wedges because how dangerous they were. But when you're tasked to blow up the wedge, you blow up the wedge. With and the wedge usually was either a couple of linebackers, a linebacker, and a tight end. Sometimes they put a really athletic the, offensive lineman out there. The big boys back there. Yeah. Oh man, bro, I can tell you, CJ, when your coach was like, "Hey, if you don't blow up that wedge, you're gonna get cut." And he's like, all right, I guess I'm going to black out. And I go blow up this wedge. And then all you see is the film. And you're like, because like, you did a damn good job, baby. So you're like, I don't remember any of that. I don't remember a damn <laughs> thing. I just know that I was told to blow up the wedge. And that's what I did. But I did a good job. But I, you suffered the consequences. But anyway, I digress. The NFL now, the XFL model, uh, they kick from the 30-yard line. Um, and the rest of the kickoff team begins at the 35-yard line separated from 10 members of the receiving team by five, only five yards. So you don't yep. have the car collisions, yep. high speed collisions that you usually do. So it's much safer. And apart from the kicker and the returner, none of the special teamers in the XFL kickoff are allowed to move until the ball is fielded. So when the ball is caught, that's when the guys who are only, you know, they're only five yards apart. That's when they can go block each other. And I think the numbers are uh, that 90% of XFL kickoffs are returned 90%. And the NFL is oh. like at the NFL is at 35 to 36%. Um, I think is on average. But last year, the, like I said, they hit a they hit a low last year because only 22% of kickoffs were returned. If the and by the way, there's a movement, they got to get 24, I believe, out of the 32 votes of the teams to pass a new rule or to change a rule. Um, there is a really good chance that the NFL, they don't have all the support yet, but they can get it. If they change that rule before Keelan Robinson, I think in March, you know, they're going to propose a new rule change. I don't know if they'll agree to it, but if it passes before Keelan Robinson, you know, I mean, is drafted or is an undrafted free agent, whatever it may be, it could be huge for his value. Definitely immense for his value because then some teams are going to go, all right, damn, we actually can get some hidden yardage on kickoffs now. Yeah. All right, you know what? To hell with it. If maybe we'll keep a guy, a couple of guys on our practice squad potentially that are just specialists that we could use in a complimentary fashion in other ways. Right now, they don't do that because there's just not enough room on a roster and roster spots are too valuable. But remember, they expanded the practice squads. You can stay on practice squads longer. And specifically, teams can bring you up the day of the game on practice squads now because they changed the rules. If you're a team that values special teams and the return game and hidden yardage, he's a guy that you might consider as a priority free agent or something like that. So these are the external factors that are pushing and dropping draft stock with a lot of players, including the Longhorns. Yeah, a hundred percent. I'm I'm with you. I think that's interesting if they do adopt that kickoff, not only for, for Keelan Robinson, but we'll get to Ryan Watts a little bit later, a guy like him as well. Uh, but for the next guys, the next group right here, we'll stick with the playmakers, the wide receivers and the tight end. Uh, for Xavier Worthy, I had the wide receiver gauntlet. We know he's going to test very well yeah. in the 40. How yep. well can he kind of run straight through that gauntlet with the catches on each side from those quarterbacks showing off the hands, like kind of erasing those question marks is going to be big for him because we know he's going to test very well. Uh, again, on, almost completely opposite, Adonai Mitchell, who had one of the best drop rates of any of these top elite wide receivers in this yeah, draft. Sure. What can he do in the 40s? If he can kind of clear that 4-5, mid 4-5 conversation, 
I think he could sneak his way into the back end of that first round. So that'll be interesting. That top end speed is really what teams want to see from AD Mitchell, I think. And I, I, I think he's going to put oh. on a show there. It's interesting. No, it's no, no, I love it because I, the, the people keep telling me that AD Mitchell can run a 4 4. Yeah. That is possible. I want to see it. I want to see it. That if he runs a high, he, if he runs a high 4 4, he's a first round pick. Definitely. I, I think if he runs a high, like 4 4 8. Four, four, anything four, four ish. I think he's their first round pick. If he runs at four, five, it's got to be low four, five. Like you talking about four, five, one, four, five, yep. two, something. Like that. It, still, I think it that may drop him into the second round. He got to. I think what he's got to do is he's got to dispel any notions that he doesn't have the straightaway speed. And a four, four of any kind will do that. It's interesting. And you know what? Let's talk about this real quick because I, I guess I'm going to go on a rant, man. <laughs> The NFL is so full of it. They so yep. they so full of it. And the truth is, NFL coaches are starting to figure it out, right? That you guys turn the combine into a TV show. And therefore, there is less and less, you know, credible data that I actually can extract from the, the combine because of what you've turned it into, the Underwear Olympics. Think about it. There's a reason Sean McVay, uh, Matt LaFleur, Mike McCarthy, uh, Robert Sala, you know, Bill Belichick famously wasn't a fan of going to the combine uh, later on in his coaching career. My man Kyle Shanahan, did, he didn't go in 2022. He doesn't go all the time either. It, it, it's such a TV show now. And the 40-yard dash, the prime example. I'll get, take, take some. Okay, so there are laser times. They have laser technology to find out how fast you run. That's what they actually go on at the NFL. But do you know there are still NFL scouts with stopwatches in their hand? They don't trust And they're like, I got the unofficial time. What the hell are you talking about? What? Are you, what? what <laughs> unofficial time? There's a laser time technology. We're talking about or using AI, using all sophisticated technology to get the 40 times. Like, oh, I got it right here. I got it. I got it. I'm good. There is this. I don't know, it's this antiquated kind of, I don't know, old school mentality in the NFL. And the combine's a prime example. Think about it, guys. Now, and Trey Lance, actually. I remember famously Trey Lance and a lot of guys. Lamar Jackson refused to run the 40, right? Look, uh, Trey Lance. Th Tyler. There's some guys. By the way, Marvin Harrison Jr. is not even going to the combine. He's he he not going. He decided, now nah, I'm good. I ain't going. Y'all come see me. I'm good. I ain't going. You know, there's a famously a story uh, that <laughs> Dan Neal tells that he got to the combine and they and they had him like in a line. They were in the line because you had to register and everything to the combine. And Orlando Pace walked in and was like, "I ain't waiting in no line. I'm going. I'm going back to the crib because he was <laughs> <laughs> and he decided to leave. He was like, "No, nah, I'm good. Y'all come see me." Right? The combine is just a TV show. And, and now it's been exposed as that. You have fewer and fewer quarterbacks throwing at the combine because they're going to make you throw to a receiver that you ain't never thrown with before, all right? And he's, he's got no chemistry with it. It's like, yeah, throw that six route. Oh, you don't look and good. And then like everything's going to be dissected on Twitter and on the TV <laughs> shows. If you miss two throws by a little bit, you can't throw the ball deep. Everything's <laughs> dissected and, and overblown to an extent where, you know, the, the – It's not worth it. The, yeah, you know it. And it's I mean, not it's real, crazy. and it's not necessarily real football. So that's kind of my complaint about the combine, CJ, is that and the 40 time, the 40 is ridiculous. Because this, this is why the 40 is ridiculous, guys. We have GPS trackers now. Um, yeah. We have GPS trackers that can track how fast a player runs in game with the ball or without the ball, with pads on, everything. Why the hell are we still running a 40? You you know you know what football speed is. We've solved it. We got it. We don't know exactly what determines football speed, what's in the criteria, but we can document it. It's just you can see it. 20, he goes 20 miles per hour. He can run. Okay, good. He's he's fast enough. And yet they still want to see you run straight ahead 40 yards when you never in football ever run straight ahead 40 yards. The, the, the well, why? It's a TV show. Yeah. And the main event of this TV show is the 40. Yeah. And it's like, it's the, but it doesn't apply to football. It's not applicable. And that's why the combine, ladies and gentlemen, is ridiculous. We call it the silly season for a reason.
Rod, it's, it, I think you hit the nail on the head when you call it antiquated. You know, if if anybody ever watches tennis and there's the, the ATX Open going on in Austin right now that I'm hoping to stop by later in this week, but you 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 get those close calls on the line and you go to the monitor and like that, they let you know where the ball hit on yeah. the line. Is it in or out? You get that answer within 20 seconds. And yet uh, football is still having the, the you know, the chain gang <laughs> where the ball's going with their eyes. It's, it's, it's wild. And so I'm with you, the antiquatedness of football with all the technology in the world, you know, you talk about the catapult vest and everything that goes into telling you how yeah. fast and, and explosive someone is. We're still sitting here wondering, you know, why it's so outdated, but, but Hey, to some it's of these guys, show. they need that, right? Exactly. Like, you like it, PJ. You like it because you'll be watching every second of that combine. I know you are because you gonna like be it. I'm going to sitting right out here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait for it. Yeah, and that's why the NFL is brilliant, by the way, guys. They're brilliant. I'm because issue. Yes, because the chain gang, you know what the chain gang represents? Drama, build up. Oh, it's so dramatic when they stretch the chains out. It's like, did he get the first down? Oh, oh. I was NFL looking to see is... if I had an index card next to me, but <laughs> I, I don't, you know. That's the that's the, the most famous one. Yeah, the, they, 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 dude, that, that's a reason they're the number one TV show in America. They know how to do it. They know how to do it. Uh, anyway, sorry, getting back to it. That's my random rant, though. But true, I would say your, your, your take on, that's my take on A.D. Mitchell. Your take on Xavier Worthy, right on. Right on. I if he he can I I would like him to go through the combine without a drop. That should be his goal. And any of the drills, no matter what they are, no drops. That it doesn't would matter have how question marks around him, hundred percent. Exactly. Honestly, he should refuse to run the forty. He'd be like, "Man, I run no 40. I'm the fastest player in college football. Have you seen it? Go let real analytics said I was clocked as the fastest player in college football in 2023. Why do I need to run the forty? That's all I'm gonna do is actually. Either I'm going to confirm that I'm already fast, or my draft stock is going to drop when I don't when I run a four four flat. People are like, oh, I thought yeah, he was going to run absolutely. a four three five, and it's like, what? I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even run it. I'd be like, no, I'm good. I'm the fastest player in college football. That's what I keep saying. I'm the fastest player in college football. Check it. I, Done. I, I, I'm with you <laughs> because there's a lot of conversation about the draft stock hurting as a result of going to this and putting yourself in a conversation. Uh, we saw it a little bit with the Reese's Senior Bowl, but a different conversation a little bit. Yep. But I did want to get to Jordan Whittington because I do think he needs to show it. a little bit of the short distance, uh, a quickness. You know, I put the 20 yard shuttle, some call it the 5105. Uh, just how well is he able to get in and out of his breaks a little bit? I think he'll do well in the wide receiving uh, drills, running routes on air against those quarterbacks. Obviously, getting the chemistry there is going to be big. But you didn't get to see him do that in one-on-ones against top uh, cornerbacks in the Reese's Senior Bowl. That'll be big for me. And then Jatavian Sanders and Christian Jones. I want to see what you put up on the bench. I want to know how strong you are because that is, uh, again, a little bit outdated of a practice, the bench press. But – it does give you an idea of what kind of strength these guys bring to the NFL level. And when you talk about Jatavian Sanders, what's the big question mark? Can he be physical in the trenches? Christian Jones, is he suited for a tackle or a guard? We'll see. But again, I think showing just how strong you are is going to be key for the two of them. And then I wanted to flip to the defensive side of the ball. And I'll go quick here because I know I want to get some stories for you about you and your time, Rod, at the combine. But uh, for Tavondre Sweat, what are you weighing yeah. in at? That's the yep. big – I mean, it's not a drill. It's just a, a question. You know, are you under 360? Can you hit 355? Do teams want you at 350? That's the big question for him. Uh, for Jay, uh, for Byron Murphy, I actually have a three-cone drill. I know he's explosive. I know he can he can bench. Uh, the 40, not necessarily a great, you know, evaluation tool for defensive linemen. But yeah. when you look at that three-cone drill and how quickly you can kind of maneuver around those cones and get back to the line – that's going to give you an idea of how quickly he can get to the second level on that the, the defensive line there. I think a good three-cone drill, and you're looking at Byron Murphy as a solidified top 20 pick in the draft. Uh, that'll be important for me. You, okay. Any of these standing out to you, bud, and if, 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 you, if no. someone jumps out? No, I love I love what you said about Byron Murphy because isn't he – is he a, a former running back? Yeah, and so like he's going to have like, – he's, so he's got – Yeah, he's got good feet, and I know he's got good feet. You can watch him as a pass rusher. And yeah. you can tell he's got good feet. I mean, he sets guys up with with a, with not a lot of space to do it in a small confined space. He will set guys up and make moves as a pass rusher. So I'm with you. I mean, that's and honestly, the truth is, man, the five ten five and the you know the three cone shit. Honestly, that that's that's one of the big the in my opinion one of the best indicators of foot 
football, I don't even call it football speed, football maneuverability, football agility. Right. Right, just and being in a given play, especially direction. the defensive line, you're changing direction yes. so quickly. Yes, those angles exactly. are so tight. You have to be able to do it. I think for most football players, to me, that's probably the best drill as an indicator of football agility. You, you know, I mean, you got to change direction really fast. And football, you're really only running DBs and wide receivers a little bit different. But for most football players, when you're running full speed ahead, you're probably running no more than ten to twelve yards before you end up changing direction in some way, form, or fashion. Now that leads me to my next one, which is Jalen Ford at linebacker. I actually have the 60-yard shuttle, which is a kind of a newer uh, Mm -hmm. uh, drill at the combine. Um, That's interesting to me. You go 15-30-15 as a linebacker, and I kind of compared it a little bit to DeMar Vion Overshone. I think Jalen Ford in in college had better production. He had better numbers, obviously, when you talk about the turnovers, the takeaways. Mm -hmm. I think he was more cerebral as a linebacking prospect. But you saw DeMar Vion Overshone. Go in the third round to the Cowboys last year because of yeah. the physical tools that he brought. Yep. And if Jalen Ford can show that he can range from sideline to sideline in the middle of the field, I think that's going to help his draft stock quite a bit because that might be the biggest question mark for him is how high of a ceiling he has athletically and at the linebacker spot, especially with the way the passing game is kind of overtaking the entire world of football, you have to be able to show that you can get from sideline to sideline uh, without any hiccups there. Uh, and lastly, yeah. Ryan Watts, and we've talked about him oh, a yeah. number of times. It's uh, again, I didn't want to necessarily go straight back to the forty because we know that he can te- he can run well. It's more to me the ten yard split. How quickly can you get off the blocks the and get from a standstill to your top speed? That ten yeah. yard split is going to give you a great indication of where teams one are going to use him in their secondary at either cornerback or safety, mm-hmm. but also. Can you, uh, you know, kind of scratch the field eventually with that top end speed that we know you can possess? How quickly can you get there? Yeah, see, because Ryan Watts, the reason he was invited, and that's a great point, CJ, you're right about that 10 yard burst, man. That's so important. When you look at the 40, a lot of scouts go initially to the 10 yard uh, yeah. split. What's that 10 yard split? I, hey, uh, especially at some positions, can care less about the 40. Give me that 10 yard split, especially at line. You're talking about front seven and up, that, that matters a lot, that 10 yard split. Um, but it's interesting why Ryan Watts, well, I was told he got the invite. Length. Yeah. I heard Mel Kuyper talking this past weekend about the draft, and his he said his favorite uh, data point in evaluation of any player in football at any position is arm length. Arm length. He said that he's always looked forward. He said it's one of his favorite data points. He said, honestly, among scouts, it's one of their favorite data points as well. Even uh, I've I've heard you talk about the Seattle Seahawks. They famously Legion of Boom. They built that on that, you know, that philosophy. No, no, we're recruiting length. Yes, 40 time and speed matters. But on a football field that has, you know, you have your parameters of a football field. The longer you are. All right. It'll actually end up supplementing for a lack of foot speed if you will right they believe that longer arm uh length longer wingspan equates to essentially the equivalent of a faster 40 time um and that's why ryan watts got the call because they want to see listen if this guy runs a four or five with that kind of length yeah in the nfl that could play all right and we and now i'm telling you man with the practice squads expanded and you can put guys on practice squads longer developmental projects are be- are going to become more of a thing with Absolutely. the NFL. Cause, yeah, because they can put a guy on a practice squad for a couple of years and go, I love, I love his raw materials. Let's just see if with NFL coaching, without having to go to class, focusing on football, if this guy can take his game to the next level. And I think Ryan Watts could be one of those guys comp- at the safety position. Matter of fact, Christian Jones, speaking of wingspan and arm length, he's one of those guys the NFL loves because of his wingspan, his arm length, and raw materials too. That's a good point. And yeah. while these are all events that we'll get to see starting on Thursday going into Saturday, uh, it's you know a big job interview for these guys. Yeah, uh, And it's going to be a busy week where they don't see the sun a lot. I was talking to a former Texas Longhorn who entered the NFL a few years ago, and he basically was telling me, you know, for, for a week straight, we're basically held hostage inside of the – 
uh, inside of the Colts stadium up there going through medical testing, interviews, on-field oh, yeah. drills. You don't ever see the sun, which might not be a bad thing in, in February in, uh, in Indianapolis. Exactly. But, uh, but Rod, going back to your day at the Combine, I mean, what were your biggest memories there? And, I mean, were there surprises that going in you didn't expect to see at all whenever you uh, ended up coming off it the It is. Combine? No, it is. That's a great question. It's, it's the most bizarre job interview that you've ever been around. I mean, maybe, maybe interviewing for the CIA or maybe for the FBI could be a job interview as invasive and as absurd and obtuse as yeah. going to the NFL combine. I mean, the, now they've actually decided that you can't ask certain questions. It literally might be against the law for them to right. ask questions about the sexuality of your mom and whether your your mom is a hooker or whether, you know, I wear women's underwear and weird stuff like that. Yeah, Rod, are, are you a cat or a dog guy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they funny. You know what? Actually, some of that may be crossing the line. We probably shouldn't do that. There's probably some laws against that, especially since the – but this is the key, though. The key is, as a player – you are in purgatory. You're not a part of the Players Association yet, so you don't have the Players Association to advocate for you or to fight for your rights, and you're no longer a student athlete. Yep. Right? You're none of those. You're in purgatory. So then it feels like we can do the hell we want with you. And that's why you get these kind of weird stories every now and then, somebody walking out on the medical examinations, which, by the way, have y'all ever seen the movie Fire in the Sky? You ever seen the movie Fire in the Sky? I've not. This guy is about a guy who was abducted by aliens and he recounts it. And it's a book, very detailed. It's, it's famous for people who are believe in aliens and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and alien abduction. And in the movie, there's this really graphic scene where the aliens are actually like you know, examining him and poking and prodding him. And oh man, crazy stuff. That's how it feels at the NFL Combine. It feels they bring you to the medical examinations. By the way, that's like uh, since 32 teams, they divide the teams up into different groups. Sometimes it's groups of eight, sometimes groups, whatever it is. And then they, those groups, they all want their own individual examination of that body part that you injured when you were seven or eight years old. I was told that I had kind of fractured my nose uh, at one point. I was told a lot of things. I didn't even know I had these injuries. It will let you know about injuries that you didn't even know you had. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that's how that's how thorough they are when it comes to the NFL combine and the medical examinations. And that's just like I said, that's the easy part of it. The whole point, the whole point of the exercise, ladies and gentlemen, the whole point of this this op <laughs> and the NFL is is doing here is pressure. Yep. They want to know how you're going to perform under pressure. So they keep applying pressure. The medical examinations are a part of it. Uh, you're not seeing the outside. Treating you like a prisoner, that is part of it. Uh, it's all just it's all deliberate. This is all intentional. Like, they don't just oh man, what we didn't know we were doing that. No, they know exactly what they're doing. It's not a um, vacation in Indianapolis by any means. No, not at all. They if may such thing exists. Yeah, they may room you with a uh, a player from um, a rival school, right? That's what they that's what they did to me. Right, they room you with an Aggie just to screw with you. Hey, you may be cool, you may, be, and that these days is not a big deal because now everybody's cool. But they do that just to screw with you, right? Um, they, oh man, this is what happened to me personally. So I'm in drills. Listen, everybody's trying to show out. Yeah. Quarterbacks trying to show out, receivers. Show, everybody's going full speed every drill. So the quarterbacks are throwing really hard. The quarterbacks actually were throwing the drills, the DBs. Yeah. Now, back in my day, it's old school. So I had a quarterback throw so hard, it split the webbing in my oh. finger. It split it right down, like, like right down here. So I, it split it so hard, and I was bleeding profusely, just bleeding all over the place. Babers, babers, hey, what's going on? It's like, oh, man, I'm bleeding. I split the webbing in my hand. Coaches are in the stands. Coaches and scouts are in the stands. Front office exec, they're in the stands, watching, literally in the stands. They start to heckle me. They're like, oh, baby, what's going on? Oh, man. Because you, literally your name is on the back of your jersey. I still oh, got yeah. it. Okay. So your name is on the back. You got your number. I was number two. I was behind Nambi Asamoa. He was number one. They went alphabetical order. So I was behind him, which ain't great, by the way, either. 
first round pick. <laughs> Everything he does is like amazing. And it's like, he goes baby. It's like, oh, get, can we get me behind somebody else? I mean, this dude is, you know I mean? Not only is he awesome, but I mean, the dude now, he's, I think he's an actor now. Isn't he married? Really? To like, right? No, no, he's, I think he's, I'm not joking. I think he's like an actor. No joke. Like, he's like, yeah. go look him up. Uh, but anyway, he's the first round pick. Yeah. And I think he's married to Kerry, Kerry Washington. Oh. I'm not joking. Look that up for me, CJ. I think he is. The, the dude's a bowler. That's what I'm saying, CJ. He's a straight up bowler, man, in every sense of the word. And they had me behind him. So that ain't good. That, 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 I didn't like that at all. That didn't make, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure I I'm sure I was great, but that didn't put me in a good light behind that dude. He's long and race like 6'1, like 205. He's like the he's like if God created a cornerback. Yeah. That dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Uh, so I spent away my to Kerry Washington. You you were yeah. right about that. Bowler. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. They had me behind this dude, man. I'm like, oh, my draft stock just plummeted. Yeah, that's right quite now. the career. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but they heckled me, man. They they and I did it just to see if they like he, Babers ain't coming back. Babers about to quit the combine. He's done. I had to go inside, get stitches, put on blood, go back out there. <sighs> Because otherwise, they'd have been like, I told you babies wasn't coming back yeah. out, man. I came back out, and they started clapping. They were like, oh, he's back. There he goes. I'm like, wow. Just a big mind game. That's crazy. It's 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 mind games. They like to play yeah. them. You know what I mean? They like to play them. And they can. I mean, they're, they're heckling the guys. Listen, you're, in, you're basically in tights and that shirt with your name on it the whole time. And they they they, they, they can't call. They like, oh, look at man, look at that dude with them big thighs. Man, he's got that high booty. Oh, look at him, man. He looked good. I told you. I like the way he looked. Look at them shoulders. It's wild. I'm telling you. It's There's crazy. There's no HR department at the combine. That's for <laughs> It's grown men out there acting a fool. But the whole point is they're doing that to apply pressure. I don't think they're doing it because they don't know how to act. I think yeah. they're doing it because they want to see if you're how you respond in pressure situations. How, you know what I mean? Do you know how? They always say play play with emotion, don't play emotional, right? And they want to see if emotion will overtake you in those situations. But I'll admit, man, it's I've never been on a job interview that crazy. Uh, no, now, I can imagine. Yeah, and then you know it's more tame now because now they're inviting fans. I believe now they they brought fans back in. That was when it was private. They were doing the right. other, whatever the hell they wanted to do all the time. Probably with a hundred less TV cameras as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can really get away yeah, with some things. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a great point. It wasn't on TV back then either. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. I remember watching the the Reese's Bowl this this past month, and they'd have the coaches pull up all the players, and you know they'd oh, like man. to mic up the coaches and the players to see what they're saying inside those huddles. But those uh the, the commentators would sit there uh, profusely apologizing for yeah for what was said in those huddles right after. Hey. I can only imagine in a closed circuit like that what was Bro. going on after after drills wild. and workouts. But no, no, yeah. it, it was it was wild stuff. Like I said, probably the most bizarre interview I've ever uh been on in my life. But it was fun, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like I even to this day, I still remember all the stories pretty vividly. Uh, all right, CJ, great stuff there here. Let me give our uh, sponsor a, a shout out one more time before we end this thing. John Donovan, president of Longhorn Wealth Management Group. Folks, John's a proud Texas Exes Life member who has served over 15 years as a Texas Exes board member. His wife and all six of John's siblings are also UT grads, lifetime Longhorns like me and my man CJ. Uh, this explains why John has dedicated his firm and uh, all of his efforts to providing total wealth management for Texas alumni, employees, family, and friends. And so let John Donovan, a certified financial planner who has spent over 30 years, folks, providing the investment, retirement, insurance and estate planning services and solutions to his clients. He can help you achieve your own financial independence by building and optimizing your desired tax efficient retirement income. So give him a call today. 972-707-4900 or visit longhornwealth.net for a free 90 minute consultation about how you can achieve your true financial financial independence. That's right, folks. So remember uh, John Donovan and the Longhorn Wealth uh, Management Group. We appreciate their support. And until next time, CJ, and then, uh, thanks to our man CJ and thanks to John Donovan as well. Thanks to all you guys out there for watching and listening uh, for On Texas Football. Until the next episode of Talking Ball, hook them. <laughs>